Like, I, I don't yeah. know. So we're going to start with the NFC. Where Dealer's choice here, Maddie. Where do you want to start in the NFC? Which division? Well, I think we should start with the divisions that we know the most about, right? So the North, we'll start with the North, then go East, South, and then West. Okay, works for me. All right. So um, might as well start with the Chicago Bears, right? Okay. Yep, let's go alphabetical. I'll just quick run through their additions. So Brett Rippon, DeAndre Swift, Brett wanna... Rippon quarterback, yeah. back up. DeAndre Swift, Keenan Allen, wide receiver Dante Pettis, O-lineman Ryan Bates, O-lineman Jake Curry, Matt Pryor, O-lineman, Cole Shelton, uh, Gerald Everett, tight end, Jake Martin, the end. Holy fuck. Um, amen. A Lima, <laughs> or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I'm not even trying to. A bonga minga. A bonga minga. Okay, okay the there you go. Yeah. Cornerback Jalen Johnson. Okay. Safety Kevin Bird. Um, safety Jonathan Owens. And long snapper Patrick Scales. Yeah. A lot of business for the Bears. So so the Bears have been active in the free agency market. And that's what you get when they've had that space, right? They've been setting them up to be able to do that for a while. I actually really like what the Bears have done um, in this uh, in this window, uh, in this free agency window. I think even looking at just their top signings. So um, I've given them a grade the bears of a B to a B plus couldn't quite decide. We'll see how it all comes off. But um, I like Deandre Swift in terms of like, he's a really good weapon in a one, two punch. As long as he has another quarterback to kind of do uh running back to do the heavy lifting and can uh, Khalil Herbert offer that? Well, we'll see. Um, but Swift can be quite injury prone and a bit soft, but, as long as his load is lessened by Herbert, he becomes a really great weapon. Um, Keenan Allen, although coming towards kind of the end of his career, um, in 2023, had 108 receptions for nearly 1,200 yards. Uh, a really good big body receiver. And they've tried to revamp their own line, um, which I think was a must for the Bears after. Yeah, just Keenan, Allen, Keenan Allen's older than Nicholas Farrell. Yeah, no, no, Keenan Allen is old, but last season he had 108 receptions for 1,200 yards. I just had to throw my Harry Potter reference in there real quick. If anybody <laughs> doesn't know, he had the Sorcerer's Stone. But the source, the, Yeah. Um, Do you they, know that we call that something different in the UK? Do you know it's the Philosopher's Stone in the UK? Yeah, I, the I, they now Stone. changed, they actually changed the na the covers of the movies over here now too. Yeah, it was um, the Philosopher's Stone. But whatever he fucking that motherfucker's <laughs> been alive for like three hundred years in like Harry Potter <laughs> movies, and so like I just like I get it, but you gave up fucking draft capital to go get Keenan Allen. I, I just okay, and then at what point Fourth does round. Keenan Allen fall off? Like because it's going to happen. So at what point does he fall off? I think Swift has proved through two different teams that he's definitely not a like your top weapon, and he's never going to mm. be. And so I think they did all right. I think they made, they got better. I don't think they got as better as the talking heads on TV thing. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that they've got better. And what I think has happened as well is they've set themselves up quite nicely for the draft. Obviously, it, they're going to draft Caleb Williams first overall. Um, and then I think they're in the point of, look, I don't want to be told that we haven't given our quarterback the chance to be successful again. Like with Fields, we could say to them, Fields never had the opportunity to be successful. The weapons weren't there. The O-line has been terrible. But there's they Aaron. have... Yeah, well, there's also the fact that the reason Fields wasn't good is because Fields isn't good. So, that's, <laughs> so, so that makes sense. Um, but they haven't given them the opportunity. They haven't given him the opportunity to, uh, to do it either um so i think it makes a lot of sense to me obviously their defense finished off one of the best in the league 
uh, towards the end of the year. Um, they bring in two-time Pro Bowler Kevin Bird. Uh, Bard Bird, depending who's saying Bard, it. Yeah. Uh, he, so two-time All-Pro, but was also part of one of the worst secondaries in the league at the Eagles last season. So I wonder how that's going to go. Jonathan Owens is a pretty solid player. Good tackle stats at Green Bay. Obviously, it also means Simone Biles will be at Chicago Bears games. So I'm sure they'll sell uh, a few more tops there as well. So that's always a plus. Yeah, poor Green Bay. They don't get the presence of Simone Biles every other Sunday anymore. Um, yeah, it's a shame. And there's pictures. So there's this art, our artsy district is called the Broadway district. And I literally live five blocks from Broadway mm. Street, right? There's pictures of her and Taylor Swift walking down the Broadway district, which is wild to me in Green Bay. <laughs> like her and Taylor Swift in Green Bay walking down a street five blocks from my house. It's wild to me. Yeah, but Chicago gets that with Chicago gets that with everybody, so they don't need right. So that's why I said that. poor Green Bay. Yeah, poor, yeah, Green poor Green Bay. Bay. They get the um yeah. Now I think the Bears got better. Don't get me wrong. I think their yeah. their defense came on last year. I like some of the moves they made on the defense. I like that they're going to try to keep the quarterback upright. That was some good moves. And yes, you want to give them weapons. I just don't know about the Keenan Allen move because I, without looking, I think they gave up a fourth for him, which I think yeah, is, it's kind a fourth, of, yeah. is kind of high for a, a old receiver. But I do want to ask. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but two of our shows, I, I am paraphrasing, but I got called a fucking idiot in the comments because I said Justin Fields is worth a sixth or a seventh at best. Oh yeah, you killed it, man. Good, like good call. I worth and what he got. Yeah, I I think it's everybody in his draft class looked at that, isn't it? And we'll we'll talk more about the Justin Fields trade on our AFC show on Thursday. So little yeah. Uh, well, I figured it can be touched both ways. I just think <laughs> I think the Bears got into a put in a position where I think yeah. they got for, they forced themselves to make a dumb move, and this is where it applies to the Bears. If I am the Bears. I am keeping Justin Fields. I am drafting Caleb Williams. I am waiting till somebody gets hurt during the preseason, and I am trading him for a third-round pick. Yeah, Fields, that's what – when they didn't trade him initially, and I think it's because they went in with a too high evaluation initially, right? So if they lowered their evaluation to a fourth from the jump, a third or a fourth from the jump, they might have got that for him in the trade market, when you look at what other teams, like other quarterbacks have gone, have gone to other teams. I also think you're, you're also trading for the Justin Fields contract. He's also, he's obviously in the last year of his rookie deal. So you need, you're going to have to decide whether you give him the fifth round option. And you're, you're not going to have gonna, to see. Yeah. You're not good. You're obviously not going to give him what, the fifth close round to 25 million. So yeah. So, you, so you're obviously not going to give him the fifth round option. You need to decide what you're going to pay him and all of that kind of stuff. But if you, so the bears are able to get rid of him at that point, once they hadn't got rid of him, you hold on to him. You say to Caleb, you're playing from the jump and you make fields the very, very clear number two. And then fields is a great quarterback to bring into a system where you've just got your quarterback injured and you just say to him, just give us a low floor. Uh, just now, the Bears sorry, wouldn't have done it was a this. high floor. Yeah, the Bears wouldn't have done this because it's the Vikings. But it's in that like when Kirk goes down, you call yeah. up a team and then you you get a higher pick than the sixth. And I exactly. know people are like, it can be a fourth on playing time. He's got to play fifty one percent of the snaps. They have Russell Wilson. Unless Russell Wilson gets hurt, he is not seeing fifty one percent of the snaps on that team this whole year so it's a six yeah it's an interesting it's such an interesting quarterback situation we'll get to that, that on follows thursday, on thursday I, I love the yeah. russell wilson signing for the steelers so but we'll, yeah 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 so dropping on, dropping i give on i give the bears a high c or a low b like i don't think yeah, they did yeah. horrible but i think the talking heads are wrong not the bears if that makes sense yeah because i think i give I give them a B to a B plus. I I think I like the Keenan Allen trade a lot more than you do. I think Keenan Allen becomes a very good. 
yeah, I think Keenan Allen is a very good wide receiver for a rookie QB to come into. And I don't mind giving up the fourth for that. If you think of well, like the draft is a crap shoot, like what are you getting in the fourth round? They gave up the 32nd overall pick for Chase Claypool, so they better be careful on trading for receivers. That's that was stupid. That was the bigger that was the bigger issue there. <laughs> And I actually like that time. trade better because at least Clay, Chase Claypool was younger. Yeah, but for the 32nd pick in the draft, that's it, Yeah, and that's high. because Miami didn't have a draft pick. But yes, yeah, like yes. it yeah. was a second round pick. And when you traded, I don't think you thought you were going to be the worst team in the league and he was younger. It just like you didn't have a quarterback that could throw him the fucking ball either. So it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> um, it is what it, it is. It just didn't make sense in that rebuild. Yeah. But let's talk about the Detroit Lions, man. Man, we're going to talk some Lions, man. So, yeah, the Lions got what we're going to say. Sorry, Maddie. No, I was just going to say for me, the Lions have kind of gone and uh, gone into the mode of keeping players, right? They've basically said we had a successful season last year. Let's just try and keep everybody. And then they've added small bits of talent and i think that talent is really good you're gonna read through all the moves now so go, yeah go ahead. donovan people jones graham glasgow kevin zeitler dan skipper marcus davenport okay wait well people These jones wide receiver signs. graham glasgow offensive lineman Z zeitler offensive lineman dan sniper offensive tackle marcus davenport Edge rusher who has not played a full season, I think, his whole career <laughs> and played like four games last year for the Vikings. Yeah. Um, DJ Reader at defensive line, which I actually think was one of their better signings. That's a great um, name. Linebacker Revis Mabin or Jalen Revis Mabin, cornerback Clayton Davis, um, Emmanuel Mosley at corner, Akeem Roberts at corner, or Akim, sorry. Michael Bagley, Badgley, Badgley, kicker, and <laughs> Scott Daly, long snapper. Nobody knows anybody but like two long snappers in the whole league. So there you go, guys. Um, yeah, a lot of teams, a lot of so teams been signing long snappers. That I like people Jones. You can hold on to him. I think Zeitler was a good signing. I like Dan Skipper is a decent signing. I think DJ Reader was their best signing of the yeah. bunch. And then they traded, right, for Clayton Davis. Was that a trade? Yeah, it was a trade. Yeah, trade with the books for a six-round pick. In exchange for a 20 third round pick. Third yeah. round. Okay. Yeah. So they swap so they swap picks for the six and the third, and they swap Carlton Davis as well. So I don't know. I believe that I think that the um Lions stayed pretty much where they were i don't think they got better and i don't think they got worse yeah so so for me for me they've identified the problem that they had which was their dan campbell their, uh, apart from that big problem oh. uh they've identified the problem on the defensive side of the ball that they have which is obviously their passing game so they've got some guys in there to pass whenever i've seen marcus davenport play i like marcus davenport but will he play he was injured every year with the Saints, yeah. and then he got injured right away last year with the Vikings. So I, I don't know. Like, yeah. So, so whenever he plays, he looks good. So if you get a season out of him, but we haven't had a season out of him, so you're going to struggle. DJ Reader is a great move. Two years, twenty-seven million, uh, with a nine million guarantee. I think DJ Reader is a is a great move for them. I think he offers them pass rush from the D-line position as well as blocking the runs as well. I think <coughs> he's great. Carlton Davis is a very solid cornerback and Amik Robertson doesn't move the needle that much for me, but is like, again, a solid uh, cornerback as well. Um, so they've brought in secondary help. They've brought in the pass rush help. I think DJ Reader probably moves them a little bit, but not really a huge amount. Yeah. Um, I just, I said it last year, and I and I truly believe it. I think that they're going to fall back. I think that Lions mm -hmm. will fall back. I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. 
And I think a lot of it is Dan Campbell. And I think Dan Campbell showed the makeup of or the, like, what's behind that team. They were all in one year. And then when they didn't happen, he was like, even Dan was like, who knows? We might never get back there. Like, yeah, you're not going to because of shit like that. That's exactly the kind of culture breaking comments from a head coach. Because if you're the player and they're like, what, Dan doesn't think we're that good? Like, what, we were lucky to get there? Like, I, I just don't get the shit that comes out of Dan Campbell's mouth sometimes. Like, you're not a player, bro. You're a coach. There's certain shit you cannot be saying. Yeah, like, the whole city, like, swelled around it as well. Like, it was a whole city push. And you feel like if they walk into the stadium and they're not getting that immediately, like, they won't play at the same they won't play at the same level. And also the division has got better um, this year as well. Like the NFC North was in a bit of a weird flux place. Last year we'll see how whoever's quarterbacking for the Vikings plays, um, obviously. But the actual, the, the all the teams look like they have a better roster um, at the start of this year. So so we'll see. Um, Unless he shifts yeah. the bet at Sam Darnold all year. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Um, for the Lions, I gave them a B, but that's more on like the players that they kept. They didn't really lose anyone important. Like they're pretty much in the same spot. I think we're like I'm quite a nice grader. So like you are we because call it, I call it a yeah. C minus. Yeah, we call uh, when I'm teaching a history class like this, where it's like if you're just staying at like your good level, we say that you're in the beehive which means that you're never going to be bad enough to drop below a B, but you're not really smart enough to hit the A either. So, like, the whole class is just a beehive. Oh, and that's so why I thought of the Lions. You just call your kids, your students dumb. I see. Okay. No, B is good. B is really good. You're just, never, like, you said you're never going to be smart enough to be an A, so I had to... Yeah, like, they don't, they don't have the necessary stuff to get an A. B is good. Dumb. Dumb kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, Our exams I give it, on multiple choice questions, so it's harder. <laughs> I give it a C minus because I don't think they really upgraded anywhere. And yeah. if you're where they made it to last year, you, and if you're really going to make a push, probably should have upgraded. But that's I think DJ Reader just gives them just gives them a little bit more. But yes, I understand the the thought process there. And guys like DJ Reader, though, it's not like they cost the world. So if you were that great, why didn't your team resign you? But that's always a free agent argument. That's every free agent argument. That's why I always that's why I always find it weird. Like when fans say they've won because of free agency, and it's like, well, hang on, you've just signed a load of players that are the outside of a few free agents, like Saquon Barkley, for example. You've signed a load of players that nobody else really wants. Well, so you may have got better, but yeah, moving on. Let's talk about the team who got worse in this division. Okay. So yes. the, Green, the Green Bay Packers used some weird four-year rule that nobody knew about to retain A.J. Dillon. Then they move, make a lateral move to pay Josh Jacobs more than Aaron Jones, which I actually think Aaron Jones is probably better, but at best we'll call it lateral. We'll call it a wash, right? Then Aaron Jones I, was better last year. Huh? Aaron Jones was better last year. Yeah, at the end of the year, that dude was fucking amazing, right? Yeah, so, he was unstoppable. And so I love Josh Jacobs, too. This isn't a shot at Josh Jacobs. I just think yeah. you had a better running back in the building. And they're like, it's a four-year deal, but it's really like four one-year deals if you read the contract. The Packers can get out of it without barely any yeah. repercussions after every year. Um, they re-signed Tyler Davis. Yay. They re-signed Eric Wilson. Okay, that was good. Um, you re-signed um, Ballatin. I just – and then here's the thing. So, Xavier McKinney, best signing they did. That's actually an upgrade. I will give them that. But then you go and sign Greg Joseph. Take it from me, who has been with Greg Joseph for three <laughs> years now. I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. The guy is money over 50 but can't make anything under 40, so good luck with that. I, and now you're going to put him in Lambeau Field where that wind is whipping? Like he's not even in Minnesota's dome anymore? Yeah, mm. that was dumb as fuck. 
I always think kickers in the NFL is just strange now because Brandon Aubrey's coming in. They're the most popular sport in the world is about kicking a ball. So like I understood for a while, Oh, the 32 kickers in the NFL are the best 32 kickers, but actually they're the kickers who decided to play American football, the actual best kickers are in oh. a totally different sport. So I feel like you could go grab kickers had, from other places to replace this pool. I had an argument thrown at me by an Aussie yesterday about how many um, punters from rugby are in the NFL. And I said, are mm -hmm. you really trying to compare punters to NFL athletes? Yeah, it's not the same. That punters... The NFL should be hiring more punters from sports like Aussie rules, football, rugby, and all of that, 100%, because then your punters will also be able to tackle and be athletic and do all of that, right? But saying, oh, the NFL is relying on rugby and stuff because of their punters is just nuts. Like, that doesn't make any, that doesn't make any sense to me. But for me, the best <clears throat> kickers are in other sports. So... The idea that you have this school of kickers who all just seem to rotate from team to team to team. My idea is if you've failed in one team, how much better are you going to be somewhere else? Now, I don't think Greg Joseph is as horrendous as you. I think you have a lot of like hurtful memories attached to Greg Joseph. If you and, lose your team multiple games, are you not horrendous? Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great point. And I think... I like the idea of having someone that's money over 50, but you've got to make the gimmies. And Greg Joseph doesn't make the gimmies. He misses extra points on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Greg Joseph, Greg Joseph is a strange one. They cut Carlson for Greg Joseph. Like, that shit doesn't make sense to me. Mm. Carlson was a young kicker who, I don't know the stats in front of me, but he couldn't have been worse than Joseph. So why wouldn't you ride the big leg younger kicker i don't know i don't know Whatever. yeah it's 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 strange um the josh jacobs move is also a straight i i agree with you josh jacobs is probably in terms of things like potential and ceiling and all of that kind of stuff josh jacobs is probably a little better than aaron jones last year he wasn't and how much better is he because in year one josh jacobs is costing you double what aaron jones is going to cost in his one-year deal with the Vikings. So in year one, he's got 14.8 million coming his way. And Aaron Jones for the Vikings costs 7 million for one year. So is he double? Is he better by that much? No, like, no, he's, he's definitely not. And is he better? Because Aaron Jones is a way better receiver. So like, if you do all around yards, Aaron Jones is going to kill. This is all things being equal and everybody staying healthy. Yeah. Aaron Jones is going to kill the all purpose yards compared to Josh Jacobs. And now this is my argument. If I'm a Packer or a Packer fan, you have a young quarterback in Jordan love who has shown some life, who has shown some ability. And now you're going to take away his safety blanket out of the backfield. And how many yeah, times have we watched yeah. Aaron Jones catch a screen pass or a swing pass and make something huge happen? Aaron Jones basically won them a playoff game against the Cowboys. Like he won them a playoff game on his own back. Like everybody's like, John Love, John Love, John Love. John Love has to hit open receivers because everybody's in the box stopping Aaron Jones. And Jordan Love has proved himself last year. Like he played really well. We'll see how he does this year. But he, I still he don't know what he is, but he showed forward. me something. Like, that's yeah, he's saying. shown us something. Like we know he has something. He's an Which NFL we didn't quarterback. Know that he had at the start of the season. Yeah, definitely. 100%. I just don't know how good of an NFL quarterback yet. Yeah, and I, 100%. For, for me, the sky's the limit, but the floor's the limit too. Like if you get what I'm saying yeah. with him, like it could go yeah. either way. I just need to see more, but that's not shitting on Aaron Jones, but why would you take his safety blanket away? I am so don't understand. Yeah, I, I didn't get it. And Xavier McKinney is a really, really good free agency signing. You get yeah. A good, really good safety at the age of 24. So he's just reaching his prime. Like, really, really good signing for me. But for me, it's what the Packers didn't do. So they have this young team, this like crazy young team. Where's the vet experience to get you over the line if you're if you're the Green Bay Packers? Like all of those young teams need a AJ Dillon. Some 
<laughs> but, yeah, all right. Needs a veteran experience. You need veteran experience to get you kind of over the hump, like get you over the line. Like, what did the Eagles have in their Super Bowl winning team or the team that most recently got them to the Super Bowl? Well, yes, they had loads of young talent. They have Jalen Hurd standing up a quarterback. They have um, uh, AJ, AJ Brown. Brown. They have Devontae Smith. But what else do they also have? Jason Kelsey. They also had Darius yeah, Darius Slay. They have all of these players that have been there, done it before. The Chiefs, you have like obviously Patrick Mahomes has now been there, done it before. But in his like first Super Bowls, you have Patrick Mahomes. But Andy Reid is the not even the coach in the Packers is an experienced veteran coach in getting them over the line. So they could have done with adding some vet experience for me. The Packers, I've given them a C. I guess the only thing I'll give the Packers is there's still a lot of time after the draft to pick up some veteran guys if that's what you're going to do. Yeah, I, yeah, I've given them a C. I think Xavier McKinney lifts it up. And I think, I don't think they wanted to add many free agents this year because obviously they have this like that's, young team. Yeah, that's not what they do so. either. But it's yeah, still. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about, and I, you guys can call me a homer. I'm okay with it. But this is one of the teams I think did the most mm -hmm. this year with what they had. And I think people are finally seeing Kowasi's vision come to fruition after dumping big contracts last year and this year. And I know a lot of Vikings fans were upset because they were big names. But if you look at it, we get rid of Eric Kendricks and then he falls off completely. We get rid of Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr falls off. Now, Daniil Hunter is not going to fall off, but he was going to be 30. He's getting $50 million guaranteed, and I think Jonathan Grenard is a perfect replacement for it, and I love what they did. To me, the big thing comes down to is how Sam Darnold going to play because of Kirk Cousins going, but let's run through this quick. Quarterback Sam Darnold, running back Aaron Jones. We re-signed Brandon Powell, which if you're not a Vikings fan or Maddie, you probably don't understand like how big that great is. Great move. Trent Sherfield, I think, was a great pickup for your four or five receiver because mm -hmm. that's where he's going to be on your depth chart. Johnny Munt, I thought, was a great resigning because he is universally known as the best third string tight end, which is a weird thing for people to say, but okay. Yeah. Quisenberry, they needed to resign because he played almost, he played four positions last year as a backup for them on the offensive line. So that's good. They needed to do more on the offensive line. I could argue that. Dan Freeney, I, I, I think that's just a depth move. I just don't really get that, I'll be honest. But here we go to Jonathan Grenard, four-year, $76 million. Way cheaper than Daniil Hunter. The guy put up 12 and a half sacks last year. He's young, he's coming, and he's been just ascending every year since then. Mm -hmm. Andrew Van Ginkle was an amazing signing who Flores drafted. This guy can play all over at any position. Um, Jihad Ward is a guy you're going to bring in to um, – you're going to bring him in on running downs and Jerry Tillery, you're going to bring down and passing downs. So they got two guys that cover needs that you would most likely rather have in one guy. Um, Jonathan Bullard, we had to resign him because we needed the depth. Jonah Williams is a good, another depth piece. Brian Cashman is way better than he is. He is anybody who's wondering, he is a younger, faster Eric Kendricks. So that was a great move. And then you can go through Hill was an okay signing. I'm not sure how I feel about the Shaq Griffin signing because yeah. I feel like that's just a depth move. And then I have no idea who this John Parker Romo is that played in the XFL last year, but that's a kicker. Should we see if we can find out some of John Parker Romo's stats? It's something mm -hmm. about that he has this booming leg. He, I guess he has this monster fucking leg. That's all I know about him. Brandon Aubrey 2.0. I was hoping you knew more about him. I didn't. And, and he played in the USL XFL or the XFL or the USFL. I don't even remember which one. Wait, it had to be the USFL, right? Because the XFL is just coming back now. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. John Parker Romo. I was I did, it. He was, I did he fuck was with Chicago. Last group. I did fuck with people in a group, though, after Kurt signed. They signed this kid, and I was with the Atlanta, and I started posting in the groups. The Viking signed Romo. <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking that. Like when I first saw his name, I was like, oh, that's uh 
It's an interesting conclusion. Oh, he. Oh, right. Okay, he can apparently drill a seventy-three yard field goal. Okay. Uh, th- okay, cool. There's videos of him like nailing seventy-three. I don't have a problem like, with this, no, just because Greg Joseph was so bad. Yeah, that feels like it could be the same problem, but I mean, Greg Joseph wasn't nailing them from seventy-three yards. There's also a video of him here, like putting in a pretty decent hit, so he can actually tackle, which is like always handy for a kicker. Um, yeah, I look. I love what you. I love what the Vikings have done. So basically, it's weird saying this. Because I also love what the Falcons have done because the Falcons have kind of taken themselves from a nothing team to a contender by getting Kirk Cousins as long <laughs> as Kirk Cousins is a contender. Yeah, as long as Kirk Cousins is healthy. A like when you look at their weapons. have a shot at winning the Super Bowl. I'd, I, I was thinking contender for the... Well, yeah. Contender. For, I think they're a dark horse for the NFC. But we'll... we'll anyway. Um you're Kirk Cousins, like bringing in Kirk Cousins, but then Kirk after losing Kirk Cousins, the Vikings have also pivoted really, really well and have built up a team, um, which is kind of built for success, right? So, so you, I love the laugh. <laughs> we'll get I didn't to, need we'll to get either. To it just came out like it was like. <laughs> but there is, I want to know what you think. So there is this rumor that the Vikings are working a deal right now to give up the 11th and 23rd pick to move up to number four. Then they're going to take the number four pick and next year's number one and move up to number two with the Redskins or sorry, the commanders in the scheme of things. Everybody's like, Oh, you're giving up so many picks. Well, really, if you go back, they gave up two seconds for that 23rd and then they will give up next year's first. But in the scheme of things, if you go through all the math, the Vikings to get to two, if that worked out, would really only give up two first and two seconds of their own picks. I think if you think about that to get up to number two, yeah. that is an amazing deal. It's an amazing deal when you look at the work that they've done with this free agency. Like when you look at the work that they've done to build the roster, the fact that they've got Jordan, the fact that they've got Addison and Jefferson in the same team. TJ like that Hawkins is a wide. TJ Hawkinson at tight end is very, very quarterback friendly as well. Like the, the Vikings Jones. have cre- the Vikings have created a roster that is a quarterback away. And to put on top of that, they've got Sam Darnold, who I think is if you look at the coaches who like Sam Darnold, like he was courted by Sean Payton. He's been like Shanahan wanted him on his staff. McVeigh wanted him uh McVeigh wanted him on his roster all of those guys and then KOC who's from that same tree as those guys has been told really good things about him and wants him on his roster as well according to reports Kevin not... O'Connell chose him Quasi yeah, let so... him choose who they went after so does that not show good signs for Sam Darnold I, I like Sam Darnold I think he was in a shape but I think Sam Darnold is good enough to get the most to get a good amount out of those weapons especially if you have that defense but what it also allows you to do is have no pressure on your quarterback who if you're going to draft two three whatever um it, it it takes all of the pressure off that position as long as Sam Darnold can play pretty well and what's the worst that can happen or oh, we've drafted this quarterback um we've drafted this quarterback and we have to put him in a bit early because Sam Darnold's freaking out. Well, all right. Like that's still better than what most teams have. And the best thing that can happen is you've paid $10 million for a quarterback that if Sam Darnold plays well, can easily be a starting quarterback in the NFL who you can get the trade value back that you've just given up for your quarterback. Um, for your rookie quarterback as well. Like if he's good and, enough and gets them to a certain place, you could get a second or a first round pick for a quarterback. And it's really it's really a six million dollar deal because he has to hit so many yeah, like crazy that, that million. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and then there's rumors out there that he turned down more money from the Broncos to go to Minnesota, which makes sense if you're him, because why wouldn't you want a chance to play with Addison and Jefferson and like yeah. turn your whole career around and prove that you can play. The one thing that Kevin O'Connell said that made me feel a little bit better 
the reason he went with Sam Darnold is because Darnold had all the talent, but his feet never matched, never married with his arm. And now after being with Shanahan, his feet married his arm, which is uh, uh, the way Kevin was explaining it. One of the bigger, you know, problems he had, and he was happy to see that the, and we'll get there. But the odd thing is, is so everybody has JJ McCarthy pegged to go to the Vikings. The reports now are the commanders like McCarthy at number two. And so you only have to get up to three to well, get Jaden Daniels. Well, somebody on this podcast kind of like scoffed at me when I was telling them how much I liked JJ McCarthy during the year. And I, not, this isn't a shot at you, this next one, but somebody was really high on Jaden Daniels early in this process, too. That's a good, the Jaden Daniels is a better look on you because I refuse to take quarterback advice from the commanders. Um, we'll see. Like, but it's not just him, like, even the evaluators <laughs> now are like, yeah, Jake. And I, I just think I just want to put that out there that somebody was high <laughs> on these two before even the so called Mel Kuypers of the world and field. Yeah, eight. it's okay because the Vikings are going to take a uh, Drake May at three. I'll fucking be so mad. <laughs> I'll be so fucking mad if they draft the bust of the century. I will be so mad. <laughs> yeah, then Sam Darnold's going to look really good. Um, I yeah, I think like, the I am the only one who doesn't like Drake May. Everybody else loves this fucking guy. Yeah, the, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it. The Chris Sims doesn't see it, and he's usually not far off on in terms of what yeah, actually well, happens on draft night. A lot of the Chris time. Sims and I both uh, put Zach Wilson as the number one quarterback once upon a time. So <laughs> there is that. Yeah, that yeah, that draft class. That draft class is such a weird, such a weird one. Um, yeah, so the Vikings have done a great job from twisting out of what a lot of teams would consider a loss, like losing a quarterback like Kirk Cousins. They've done a great, great job in turning that into a positive, and they're gonna have one of the best defenses in the league, which when was the last time we could say that about the Vikings? The purple people eaters. 